In this video, we're going to look at HDRP in Unity. HDRP stands for the High Definition Render Pipeline, which is one of the default render pipelines that is targeted towards high-end systems with gorgeous visuals. For example, the latest Unity short, The Heretic, was made using HDRP. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so let's look at HDRP. First of all, HDRP stands for the High Definition Render Pipeline. It's one of the default render pipelines that are now part of the new SRP system, or the Scriptable Render Pipelines. The other default one is the Universal Render Pipeline. So Universal is made with compatibility in mind, so it's meant to run on every single device that Unity supports. And HDRP is meant for high-end systems and consoles with lots of options to produce some excellent visuals. Okay, so there are two ways to get started with HDRP. The simplest one is to use the new Project HDRP template. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So here on Unity Hub, you can click on New, and over here you see the various Unity project templates, and you can just select High Definition RP. Then you just hit Create. And yep, here is the default scene created with HDRP, and everything is already perfectly set up. Now another option is to add HDRP to an existing project, so here I am in another project without HDRP, and now in order to use it, we need to go into our window and open up the package manager. And here we scroll down until we find the high definition RP and just click on install. All right, it's done. So now this project is using HDRP and these are our two options. So we can start from scratch with the template, or we add the package and upgrade an existing project into HDRP. Now, if you're upgrading, as soon as you have it installed, you might see some errors. So you can go over onto Window, Render Pipeline, and over here you have the HD Render Pipeline Wizard. So open it up. Over here, you see this window. Now this is an excellent little tool to help you very easily set up your project to work with HDRP. You can see all of the various issues contained within your project. And you can fix them individually or simply go here, click on fix all, and wait a bit. And yep, just like this, you can see that all the issues have been fixed. So now our project is working perfectly correctly using AGRP. Great. So here we have a fully working scene working with AGRP. Now, the first thing you can do is go into edit and into our project settings. And now here, if we go under graphics, then you should be able to see your default HD render pipeline asset assigned. And here on the graphics tab, you can set up the various quality presets. So by default, you have low, medium, and high. Then over here, you have the HDRP default settings. So you can set the various defaults for your camera, baked or custom reflection, and the real-time reflections. These defaults are really useful for defining the baseline settings of your game, which you then can override as necessary. So you have tons of options for dealing with rendering, then tons more for dealing with lighting, and so on. Again, these are just the defaults, and every single one of these can be overridden. Then down here you have the default volume settings, and down here a bunch more settings for post-processing. Then still on the project settings, over here you have the quality, and then underneath you have the AGRP. So here you can select the pipeline asset and modify a bunch more settings. So by clicking on this, is the same thing as if you go onto your project files and you select the AG Render Pipeline Asset, and there you go, this is what it's showing. Now, one of the main features about AGRP is something called physical cameras. This essentially makes your camera behave according to actual real-world physics, which is a huge help, especially if you're going for photorealistic visuals. So, you select your camera, so here it is, the main camera. And now here, under General, you can see some pretty similar settings. So you have the background type, a sky, background color, and so on. Then over here you have the projection, so right now as perspective. Then over here you have the FOV settings, and you can just modify them, okay. And then you have this nice little toggle saying link FOV to physical camera. So you can enable this, and then down here you see the physical tab, and in here you have a whole bunch of settings for a physical camera. 
Now, if you're familiar with photography, ISO, share speeds, and all of that, then this section is for you. So here you can set everything according to real world values. So for example, you can define the sensor type. So let's say I want an eight millimeter. Yep, there you go, or a 70, or just make it custom. Then you can set up your ISO or shutter speed. You can set the lens focal length. So there you go. You can modify the aperture and even modify the aperture shape. So you can see how you have tons of settings. And if you're into photography, then you can really go crazy and set up the settings just as you would do in real life. So this is great, even if all you want to do is just take some really good looking screenshots of your game world. Another great feature of HDRP is using MSAA. MSAA stands for multi-sampling anti-aliasing. So it makes your game look really good with nice smooth edges, but naturally it's quite resource intensive. Now to enable MSAA, first select the render pipeline asset. And then over here you have the lit shader mode. And in order to support MSAA, you must set it to either both or forward only. AGRP only supports MSAA in forward rendering. Once you set it, then you'll be able to see this drop down menu for MSAA. And over here, you can set the number of samples. Obviously, the more you go, the better it looks, but it also becomes more resource intensive. So here, for example, let's choose MSAA times eight. However, just by setting this field, we do not have MSAA enabled just yet. So over here is our game view. And if we zoom in, yep, there you go, lots of jagged edges. So once we enable MSA on our pipeline asset, then we also need to enable it either on our global settings or on a per camera basis. So for example, let's select our main camera. So here are our camera settings. And down here we have a toggle for setting custom frame settings. So this will override the defaults that we saw previously. So we select this and now we can see all of our settings. And here we can override any single one of these by selecting on the checkbox on the left side. So for example, over here, MSA within forward, let's select it in order to override the setting. So the default is disabled. And now here I can override it and make it enabled just for this camera. So as I enable it, there you go. Now you can see MSA being applied. So I can zoom out and zoom back in and yep, there you go. Now we no longer have those very harsh hedges. So again, you can enable this on a per camera basis. Or you can go back into the project settings, select the AGRP default, and over here you have MSAA if you want to enable it by default for all cameras. Now, since we're talking about anti-aliasing, let's look at the other types we have. So here on the camera, we can override MSAA down here, yep. But we also have another field in here for anti-aliasing. So if you select, you can see a drop-down menu for various types of anti-aliasing. So you have FXAA, TAA, and SMAA. Now these are separate from MSAA. So right now you can see that over here we have set no anti-aliasing, but our scene does have anti-aliasing. So we're currently working with MSAA being applied. So the way these two are separate is MSAA is applied by the hardware as the camera is rendering, and you either enable or disable it either globally or per camera. And then you have these other types of anti-aliasing which are applied as a post-processing effect. So you can stack them with MSAA or just use these ones and disable MSAA. For example, FXAA is very fast and produces pretty decent results. So you could add an option to your game to disable MSAA and enable FXAA instead. So here, for example, disable MSAA and there you go, very jagged. And just enable FXAA and there you go, it already looks quite smooth. Or for example, you can enable MSAA and stack it with TAA and then really increase the sharpness and there you go, you have a pretty interesting effect. So as you can see, you have tons of options so you can balance looking good or being performant. Post-processing is also slightly different now in AGRP and URP. So previously you had to install a separate package in order to add post-processing. However, right now it's built straight into the renderers. Now the reason why it's now built in instead of separate is because while both the AGRP and URP have pretty much the same effects, they are using different algorithms. So the AGRP effects are made for excellent visuals and super high quality, while the URP effects are made for compatibility and speed. But in terms of usage, it's pretty much the same as previously with the V2 stack. So you can go into your hierarchy and create a new volume. Here, let's make a global volume so it affects the whole scene. And here in the inspector, you can inspect the volume. So in terms of mode, you can either set it to global or local. And then you have the weight that you can play around with. Then you have the priority, so the volume with a higher priority will win out. And then you have the profile. Now here, if you remember back into the project settings, 
Here on default settings, you can already see the volume components for the default volume profile asset. So over here, as you create a new volume profile, right now you can see that this volume profile apparently does not contain anything, but really does not contain any overrides on top of these ones. So these are defaults that get applied and then you can either override or not. So for example, here, let's add an override. Let's go into post-processing and let's add some color adjustments. And just like that, now we just applied some simple post-processing. So like I said, this works pretty much the same as the previous V2 post-processing stack. You can add any of these types of effects. Now, another thing you can do is also play around with the mode. So instead of global, let's say we want to make this a local volume. And when we do, then we also must add a collider. So here we have a collider for our volume. Now what this means is that these effects will be applied, but only when we're inside of our volume. So right now on the outside, you can see that the scene looks pretty normal. And as I go in, yep, there you go. Now it turns into a different color because it's being applied with our post-processing. So this is how, for example, you would make a global volume for the regular lighting and effects on your scene. And then let's say you have a local volume for any time you have an indoor scene. So essentially, in terms of usability, if you're already familiar with the post-processing V2 stack, then you're already familiar with this one as well. Now, the one difference is that the volume is no longer used just for post-processing. It can be used for all kinds of settings. So here, when we click on Add Override, yep, there you go, you can see all of these settings that are not necessarily related to post-processing. So for example, we can add some fog. So for example, we're adding some fog and messing around with distance. So there you go, our scene appears and disappears. Then we could also play around with the exposure. So increase it and make our scene much darker. Then we can also play around with lighting. So here add some ambient occlusion and yep, there you go, it looks just like that. So there you go. Then on top of all of these effects, you can also play around with the weight. So right now the scene looks very different from default. And if I go down on the weight, yep, there you go, it goes back to normal and back in there and there you go. So you could, for example, play around with the way through a script and get some really interesting effects, like, for example, something like a day-night cycle. Another feature you have is dynamic resolution. So this is great, and it helps you maintain a stable frame rate by lowering or increasing the resolution dynamically. Now, to enable it, you select your AG Render Pipeline asset, and inside our Rendering tab, we have a dynamic resolution. And now in here, we just click to enable it. Then when you do, you can see a whole bunch of options. Specifically, you can set the minimum and maximum percentage. So for example, just see the effect. Let's put the minimum at 10 and then the maximum just at 20. So this means that at most our game will be rendered only at 20% of our resolution. So with 20%, you would expect everything to look pixelated, but right now it still looks exactly the same. That is because in order for dynamic resolution to be used, you also need to go back into your camera. And here on the main camera, down here, you can see a toggle for allow dynamic resolution. And as soon as we click, yep, there you go. Now our scene is very blurry because it's being rendered essentially at only 20% of our maximum resolution. So this is obviously an extreme example just to show the effect in action. So a practical use case would be to probably make the minimum at say like 50 and put the maximum at 100. So on really low end machines, it would render a small resolution and on a machine that can handle it, it would render the normal full resolution. So this is really helpful for ensuring your game is fully playable on just about any type of device. However, just like this, we simply enable dynamic resolution. Right now, it's not actually changing anything. Now, in order to do that, you need to make a script to define exactly what resolution scaling you should use. So for example, if you have a really intense part of your game, then you can make your script set the resolution lower on that particular part and increase it afterwards. And obviously the more general use case is simply setting a target to say something like 60 FPS and monitoring that in real time so you can increase or decrease the resolution to make sure you hit your target frame rate. Check the manual page linked in the description to see how you set up that script. Another great feature of HGRP is how it supports physically based lighting, meaning you can use real world values to have your lights behave according to real world physics. So here let's create a new light, let's make it a point light so here I created a new light and you can see all of the various options. For example, over here on the emission, here you can set the light intensity. And this, as you can see, it is based on real world units. So by default, it's using lumens, but you can click on the drop down menu in order to use different types of real world units. 
And also one neat thing is when you change from one into the other, Unity automatically does the conversion for you. And you can also set the light color, so set it to something. And instead of setting a color directly, once again, you can choose the color temperature to set real world values in Kelvins. So let's say you want a more reddish light or a more bluish light. And then naturally you can set a normal light cookie. Then you also have volumetric, so for example, there's the light right there and you can enable or disable. And then you can set up your shadows. So you can see how you have tons of options and once again, one of the main things is the ability to be able to set real world values. All right, so here we covered a whole bunch of things from HDRP. However, this is just an overview on how to actually get started. There's tons more features that I haven't covered here, like shadows, reflection probes, more fog, light layers, ray tracing, and many more. The complete feature list is massive, so check the manual linked in the description to see everything it offers. So go ahead, set up a scene with HDRP, play around with the values, and make some gorgeous games. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.